the main dashboard and this is what we're going to create today and in later videos we will expand on this hey guys my name is Ali and I'm a data analytics manager working in Oslo Norway in this video we're gonna continue my series on dashboard design and we're gonna pick up where we left off last time which was at navigation and layout and in this video we're gonna focus on the main dashboard and the design of that so this is what we created last time now in this video we're gonna focus on the main dashboard and this is what we're going to create today and in later videos we will expand on this so just to go through what we have here and then we can recreate it. The first thing I have is I have two KPIs, one for sales, one for budget. Then I have a pie chart where I have the sales by product category. I have sales and budget by the quarters. So how did my sales do against quarter? How did my sales do against budget for the different quarters? Then I have sales and budget over time so that I can see the totals for the entire quarter. And then if I want to see how it's developed throughout the year, I can see that here. We have sales by subcategory on the right side in a pie chart. And then we have sales for the different customer city in the United States. And if you go back, you can see we have kept the exact same navigation and layout. So let's see how we got here. So I'm just going to copy this one and then I can build it out so you guys can see how I got there. So in the last episode, I focused quite a bit on making sure that we have these lines, we have the navigation set up. I want this consistency. So now these lines that I've created by using the background and the white colors, by using the gray background and the white colors, I'm going to reuse those when I create the KPIs. So let's start off with the two main KPIs, which is sales and budget. So then I can grab a KPI and I will line it up like I've done previously. And then I will hold shift and I'll press right. And then I want it to be as high as this filter box. And then I'm going to copy this one. Actually, let me just get sales out. Sales. Then I'll drag that to values. Now you can, let's do it one more time. So I've activated the KPI. You can click on the sales if you don't want to drag it and it'll go right in. You can drag it out if you want to. And I think that's the two different ways that you can do it. Now let's finish formatting this KPI object. So I'm going to turn off the data label. I'm going to turn to none. I want to see the full labels. I want the background to be white. That's fine. And I want a data label. Let's do 20. And then we can do a category label. Let's do 10. Okay, so now I have two options. If I want to work more efficiently and uh, work faster than having to do stuff over and over. So I'm just going to copy this one, and paste it, and then I'll drag that next to this one. And then once again, I'll hit shift and right. Then I have that perfectly aligned. And now since I want budget here, I can drag that in and I can just replace the sales. Oh, I took the wrong one. That's fine. Budget, that was the percentage. I can just drag that in. And now that will replace what was there previously and keep all the same formatting. So those are the two main KPIs. And the reason I put the KPIs on top is if you have ever noticed, you usually read from the usually you read from the top left and downwards. That is why I have the, the filters on the right side and I have some of the filters uh, slicers on top. Now, of course, there are other parts of the country in the, of the world where you read from the right side. But this is at least how it is in the Western world. And that is why I've done that. So I tried to put the KPIs up left. Then I have more of the larger masses of information, uh, more downwards. And I will talk through why I have chosen to uh, put the different elements where they are, because they need a certain amount of uh, room and space to be able to, to be able to show the information that I want them to show. So the next thing we can do is we can make the pie chart. So let's drag that out. So I'll drag it out. Let's just make room for this. Now, see, now I can use the, the white lines that I've established. I can drag this down there and I'll use this one. Now we have that. And I wanted it to be sales by product category. Now notice how I find my measures. I always search, you can uh, you can scroll if you want to, but I like to search for it. So you got sales. Why do I keep doing that? Sales on values. See that comes there. Product C, product category and I will drag that to the details. Then I'm gonna format this and then I'm gonna reuse that formatting like I've shown you guys previously in, uh, in other graphs. So I want the title to be a little bit easier to see. I think that's a little bit too bright. Let's turn the background on again so we get a nice white box around it. 
and I like to put on more of the detail uh, of the uh, uh, details on the labels. You can see it says accessories and bikes. But here you can go in. You can see category. You can do cat. There's a lot of different ones you can do. I like to put all detail labels. And then this one. I'm gonna make this one easy to see too, and I want it to be smaller. And the last thing I'm gonna do. I like to keep uh, the full the full values on the numbers. Some people like to have. Uh, they like to have you know have it in thousands so you get that number and the K I like to keep it full it's a little bit of a preference but I think it's easier especially when you have sales you want to see the full numbers I think it's easier to see them so that was my second visualization let's go back see what what is next we have the map sales budget by quarter and sell but sales budget by calendar and month let's do that let's do the bar chart uh, by quarter first so we'll do this one Drag that down there. We can we can do half. No, it's too little. Let's do this. So once again, sales. Drag that to values. We'll search for a quarter. I have a lot of fields in my calendar, but that'll go on the axis. And then I also want budget, so I can compare them. So we got sales and budget. Now look now, I'm gonna click this one, Format Painter, and I'm gonna get some of the formatting over. If I can do it right. There we are. So I, I got some of it, but I don't think I got everything that I wanted because I want the x-axis to show the full labels. There we are. So we have sales, budget, quarters. I think that is what I want. I do want to fix the sorting. I want it to be sorted by the quarter. And then let's go ascending. And I don't like this calendar quarter name, so we're just going to call it quarter. There we are. Now the next thing I can do now is I can add on the line chart. So let's do that. So now I can copy this one, paste it, drag it out, one space to the right, and I think that should be enough. Now I'm just gonna change this visualization to a line chart. So you can see now it changes. And these softwares are fairly fairly intuitive, so it understands where some of the different things go. So now you can see it kept the quarter on the axis, it kept the values where they're supposed to be. It becomes a line chart, which shows it over time, which works perfectly. But I want it to be month. So I'm gonna search for month, and I'll drag that. You know, if I want to, I can put it under there and you can actually, if you see it, you can drill down if you want to drill up and down. Um, that is one possibility. But since we have quarter on the left side, there is no need for that. And you can see I have inherited a lot of the formatting, actually all the formatting. Uh, on the left side, same colors. Um, you can see the axis has full numbers, I'm saving a lot of time developing like this. Um, and. What I do want to point out is if you use a line chart, make sure that there's enough, uh, it's it's wide enough so that you don't have to scroll from left and right. So if I drag this back, you can see when I get that scroll bar at the bottom, it becomes a little bit hard to, it's just not very user friendly and it's not very user uh, design friendly. And you can see the labels, they, they, they flip, which means you kind of have to flip your head also sometimes. You don't want that. You want to be able to just keep it full and that's also why I use the short name on the on the visualization on the month, because then you it's easy to see it right away. If you want to, you can turn on data labels, but you can see it gets a little bit messy. So here, if you want the labels, you could have made that into thousands, and it gets a little bit cleaner. But I decide to uh, to turn it off here. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add the map on top. Let's do that. So we will add this map and for most for most softwares uh, Tableau click and Power BI um, you can add maps uh, by longitude and latitude what's great about Power BI though is I know that as long as the <clears throat> excuse me along as, as long as the, the column gets recognized or gets tagged I'll show you you can see here it has a globus so I've set the type as a data category and city because I know that it's a city name then it will, I believe it will use the Bing search engine, which is Microsoft search engine to figure out where is that 
in the world then you can find it now i know that sometimes it's useful then to have the country and the city this time you only have the city and i've decided just to focus on the us but let's drag customer city to a location you can see i get a lot of dots i'm going to zoom in on the us put it right there and then i will map control i will turn off the auto zoom because if you have it on and then you move around it zooms out and then it zooms back in i don't want that i only wanted to focus on the us so let's do it like this perfect now i want the different sizes on the bubbles to be affected by the the sales depending where they are so let's drag sales to the size and then course I want to format it I will click one of the elements where I've form done a lot of the formatting I want to reuse that I'll click that you can see I inherit a lot of that so now you can see I got these nice lines going all around it's getting a nice nice look the last thing I want to do is I want to add <clears throat> the bar chart on the right side and you will see I believe I had product there so I'll line it up and I'll do one shift and one to the right and what's great about this is that when I drag it on, when I put it on the right side and I let it go across, first of all, let me just check really quick. It was a subcategory, so let's do that. Let me just let me just build it first and then I'll show you guys. Axis subcategory, and then we have we'll just do sales. There you can see, and I'll click this one for my painter and paint it on there. There we have. So the reason I like to do this is first of all, if you have a long list of something, the, the less scrolling up and down, the better I think. I also think when you have longer names, such as subcategories, it is easier um, to, uh, to uh, keep it horizontal because then you can read the labels naturally as you would read, otherwise you, have, you would have to tilt your head. Now you also, if you want to, you can turn on the data labels. And that's also not an issue because they get enough room, they get enough width to actually show. Uh, once again, I took the formatting and I put it on there. And you can see now that it's it's quite easy to see. And now if I want to, I can click the category over here. It filters that down. If I want to focus on quarter one, I'll click that. It will filter that down. If I click mountain bikes, then it will filter that down. You guys are getting the point. If I click a city, it will filter that down. Notice I don't have any, no tables. I just kept it just, you know, clean, nice and kept it visual. I haven't used any custom visualizations. I'll come back to that later. I haven't done anything advanced. The purpose of this part is just to create the main dashboard to get a quick overview. So that is my example on how you can set up a main dashboard. I hope this was useful. In the next video, we're going to take a look at more detailed pages and how we can create those, how we can take this a step further and create those pages that kind of drills down into certain details in your data to give a detailed perspective on that. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. If you want to follow this series or you want to see more videos on data and analytics, then subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.